satellites. They're always up there, watching us, connecting us, guiding us. But it's an expensive business. Building a satellite costs a lot. Getting it into orbit costs even more. That was until 1999, when two engineers invented the idea of the CubeSat, a cheap, standardised mini-satellite that could be fitted into the spare space around other payloads in a rocket. Suddenly, you didn't have to organise your own launch, you could just hitch a ride on someone else's. And that made satellites available to places that could never have afforded them before. Small companies, researchers and even university students. We basically took this approach of giving them minimum resources so they cannot do anything too complicated. And then you standardize it and make it small. So two things happen. One is cheap and easy to put on a rocket. And second, you have a lot of people building the same thing. So now we have numbers behind us before every university was trying to launch their own spacecraft. The industry is now worth hundreds of millions of pounds. And over the years, we've looked at CubeSats that observe the ocean, the land, and may just create fireworks for the 2020 Tokyo Olympics. And to help mark the 20th anniversary of this remarkable invention, we've sent meteorologist Peter Gibbs to find out about the latest edition, an all-new weather CubeSat. The River Clyde here in Glasgow used to be one of the main shipbuilding centres in the world. That's now long gone, but they're building a different kind of ship here now, spaceships. Just up the road, they're putting together a revolutionary new kind of weather satellite, and that's what I'm here to see. Clyde Space is one of the companies who have built some of the nearly 2,000 CubeSats launched into space in the last two decades. Now, as a meteorologist and a bit of a space fan, I'm really excited to see the tech that could potentially improve weather forecasting. But before I get a chance to get near a CubeSat, well, I have to look a little ridiculous. So this is a basic CubeSat unit, just 10 centimetres by 10 centimetres, packed with electronics, you can see the solar panels on the side. If you need something bigger, you can just add more units to whatever size you need. It's a fantastic innovation. One thing that's really clever about these CubeSat satellites is their adaptability. So we've got a standard chassis, we've got some solar panels there, we've got electronics units. These are all off the shelf into the satellite yep. and then the customer can put their own bespoke bit of kit into that but get it into space much quicker. Yep. Absolutely, so you can see from these systems they're a uniform size. Those stack up into uh, what we call the avionics stack and within the structure itself, this is a common structure, what we call a six unit and within that you can see this avionics stack will only take up a certain amount of the volume and that leaves us with a huge amount of uh, space to stick in whatever it is we want to provide those data products and services uh, in, in addition to that. US company Orbital Microsystems has been working with Clyde Space to launch a prototype satellite to measure weather using something called a microwave radiometer. Now these things are normally the size of a coffee table and hugely expensive, but OMS have developed their own much cheaper miniature version. They aim to provide and sell weather updates every 15 minutes from a constellation of 40 CubeSats, and that's compared to the three-hour updates from the smaller number of big government-run satellites. But that extra data could improve the monitoring and prediction of fast-changing weather systems like thunderstorms and hurricanes like devastating Hurricane Dorian. We actually see ourselves as being complementary to all of the government satellites, and we're excited that they still fly these instruments. They're great, we can calibrate to them, but it's another observation that we don't have to fly. So we're flying in between, we're filling in the gaps to make it a, a more robust observation. CubeSats make it much easier for private companies like OMS to put groundbreaking kit into space. But to really benefit everyone's weather forecast, that data needs to be shared. At the European Centre for Medium Range Weather Forecasts in Reading, there are some concerns. As long as we can guarantee that working with these CubeSat providers, we'll have that same open dialogue, that same collaborative spirit and a joint passion to, to make sure these satellite instruments have an impact. And really it's a question for them 
are, are they happy to work in, in this open, collaborative environment? Because for us, that is the only way of working. CubeSat technology could have a real positive impact on our ability to monitor and predict the weather. But the tech goes far beyond that. CubeSats are already helping with space exploration to Mars, earthquake detection, and even tracking illegal logging in Kenya. Now, even this weatherman is finding it hard to predict just what the next 20 years of CubeSat technology might bring.